Uh, so this is a response to a video um, by Justin Carmine. I'm going to try to cut and paste the uh, text that he's uh, given some detailed um, points um, to discuss uh, in the um, notes for this uh, YouTube. Um, the main thrust of it is... Uh, Heidegger, Dugan, and liberalism. Uh, he made the uh, provocative statement that um, Dugan himself is a liberal. Um, this question has come up before in my own recordings. Um, uh, and he's referenced also somebody um, called um, Limburg, who has apparently given um, a talk on the Stoa podcast. Um, so to start with, uh, let me gloss uh, something on. I've been doing some um, recordings on liberalism. Um, I think the the the, the most pointed, um, the the absolute uh, smallest, and therefore the most compact statement we can make on this, um, we can get from Leo Strauss, who says um, uh, liberalism is about um, the change from freedom to, I would change from obligation to freedom. Um, it's very hard for us uh, to understand what obligation really means. I was thinking of the, um, there's a film about 1966 by uh, Jacques Rivette, or Rive, um called La Religiose, um, or The Nun, um, not to be confused with... Um, recent bad films of the same title, uh, which I think in many ways captures the atmosphere prior to the French Revolution where um, the uh, duty or obligation were totally binding. And he does that in a um, way where you can get some sense of what it would be like to live in a society like that. Um, we live... If you look at it from another perspective, there's a struggle constantly going on, um, running back and forth by the uh, nobleman um, who uh, the um, the nobles who, along with the higher clergy, ruled that society. You know, the first and second estates, and there's the idea the what is totally alien to us is the idea of nobility and um, glory. We can't. We can no longer understand those in in much sense. Um, um, I think of the polar opposite of the attitude that prevailed um, in the the prior to liberalism, prior to the social contract, prior to the metaphysical claim that the individual, which is key for Dugan, that the individual is uh, primarily to be understood prior to any obligation as the basis of um, society. Um, when you watch something like the Game of Thrones film, for instance, or the uh, TV series, the HBO series, you get overwhelmed with something which, it's important for Heidegger too, is that um, the Protestant notion that um, some kind of foul play um, is praiseworthy in some sense. There's constantly, if you watch that film, there's constantly a cynical recognition of, haha, um, they aren't acting uh, by the code of uh, chivalry. They're doing something dirty, but there's constantly this sense that, oh, well, but that's kind of good because it shows that they're, um, they get it. They're um, not just naive. Uh, or whatever. There's a kind of a praise of bad behavior which goes along with Protestantism. And um, whereas if you look at something that's Catholic, like say, I say also in Rosalini's films, his, his, his history films, um, like Louis the Fourteenth or so, because he has a, essentially a, um, a kind of elective affinity towards Catholicism, you can see a totally different attitude towards life which is that the Catholic attitude is basically like, um, yes, you get some corruption, you get corruption all over, um, even amongst the popes, um, but it's bad. 
So, but whereas the Protestant attitude is what I just described in the Game of Thrones, it's it's the reverse. So this is um, Heidegger when he studied Luther from the beginning. This is part of the um, what he understands is the corruption of the understanding of proper Protestantism out of Luther leads to this sense that um, somehow sin is good because that's how man naturally is and it's just revealing our real character instead of pretending to be um, holier than thou and so on. Um, and it's based on the rejection of the Catholic notion um, that Adam, Adam and Eve are sort of like beautiful souls or so, um, which means that they don't—they're not actually good because they don't have the consciousness that that's the goodness proper requires. And somehow God has to intervene through grace to raise them up, whereas. The view, uh, which is also sort of the view uh, Rousseau tries to get to in his own way, is that um, man is absolutely good from the beginning, but then he immediately starts on this um, challenging of God. So Luther is basically saying, um, um, uh, Eve says, oh, the snake did it where thereby she criticizes God's creation and she tries to throw, instead of just saying, oh, I did wrong and nothing more to it, she starts get in on this long um, road, which we're still on according to, you know, this idea of, uh, which of course wants to Protestantism, the Goethe uh, business about the infinity that we're in. Um, you st Once you start saying, um, well, it was the woman that told me to eat the apple and this and that, you start an argument with God, and it never ends. And so your sin, your this is how Luther sees it. It's a sin is infinite, and it starts once you don't simply um, realize that um, Christ, Christ, um, the cross, the cross, and man must be penitent. And even if you're penitent, you don't know if you're really penitent. Um, you might uh, just be uh, deceiving yourself and so on. So the whole atmosphere of the question of um, what liberalism is, is uh, difficult to come down on. But uh, for Dugan, it has um, quite a bit to do with the idea of this metaphysical individual rather than the individual, which is part of a, of a whole. So we have here these comments. Um, one is Dugan going away from Heidegger? So on the point of uh, the Dasein, which in each one is our own, our own most, our um, eigenlich. So this is a point which is fraught in um, Heidegger himself. So um, let's run through it a little bit from the outside first. Um, you have the question of almost with regard to the political question. So let's say in, in Strauss understands what's the, Strauss says Kochev has misunderstood um, the situation in politics because he doesn't put enough weight on almost. And what's the fundamental issue here is you have a polis or a city and that polis then in awareness and consciousness cooks up an idea of a, um, a regime or a way of life and then there's a split between somebody says, um, I'm a Russian, but I know that we have to live under this czarist regime, or I know that we have to live under this um, Soviet regime, or I know that we have to live under this um, Russian Federation. And so there's a split between what's one, one own, uh, what one's been born to, and what's been um, generated, as it were, in the conscious uh, Dasman space. Um, this uh, this starts already, let's say, in the time of um, Draco and Salone, um, long before, um, let's say, 200, there's, let's say there's 200 years before Socrates when this split is going on in actuality. So then there's the question of um, when Dugan points to the ethnos, this is supposed to be um, something prior to this split. So ethnos could be understood as like a village rather than the city where you have these discussions going on. Uh, in the village, you're still unified. You haven't split into this um, 
situation. So, but um, how does it stand with the docile concept? It seems that, um, so I'll put out, here, here's one of the criticisms is that um, Dugan is speaking of many docines. So how is he, can he speak of many docines? Well, actually, the problem is also in Heidegger. So Heidegger, if you look, for instance, in the history book where um, history is, uh, history of being, where being is spelled with a Y in the title, there's mention of um, explicitly of Russian docine. And if you look throughout Heidegger, there's mention of all different kinds of docine, uh, German docine, uh, medieval docine, Greek docine, um, etc. So Heidegger has already, so, so to attribute that to Dugan um, is only to attribute to Dugan something which is already in Heidegger. But if you go deeper into it, I think that what Heidegger says at bottom is that there's a mystery of how the public self and the docine, which is um, only my own, the sui gen docine, ourselves as, um, for instance, as our life, as, for instance, um, what cannot be described from outside, um, the toothache. So you have this contrast between the toothache and um, on the one side and on the other side, the mathematical proofs, which are both internal, but one of them is private and the other one is uh, supposedly public in the Greek thinking. Um, and then you see that played out, for instance, in Dostoevsky and The Underground Man, you know, you can even enjoy your toothache and all this kind of thing about the inner, you know, the um, in Milton, where Milton says that Satan, the principle of Lucifer is that um, the mind is its own place and um, it can, of its own, make uh, a heaven of hell or a hell of heaven. Um, so this space of Dasein, when it's understood um, as life or as existence, as um, the inner thing is incomplete, it also has to have this leap out into language. And it seems to me, my reading of Heidegger is that already for, the point is in Heidegger that you're not ever just that um, sui generis being because there's this mystery of how we're coming into contact through language to the um, uh, the group being the persona, the, 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 the series of personas that we can take on because they're already there in the group being that we can um, be somebody that does podcasts, we can be um, um, an idler, we can be a kook, we can be um, um, somebody who is uh, respectably placed in some position, um, we can be a politician, etc. There's all these persona positions that are already available in the Das Man world, and then there's um, this, the exact sui generis of our time, which is uh, no one could be exactly where uh, someone else is. Um, so in this sense, I would say um, the problems in Dugan are also problems in Heidegger and working out exactly what Heidegger wants to express here. Um, there's questions then also about how we're determining liberalism. So if... Um, so Justin Carmine is saying liberalism involves this rule. Um, uh, he puts the word ruler, I think, in scare quotes. And um, there is then a question about, and this ruler, I would say, who determines the norm, let's say, um, what is to be, um, what forms of experience are to be um, praised and um, furthered, which parts are to be suppressed, um, questions of um, health, mental health, for instance, on the one side, questions of um, what kind of uh, school program and stuff. All these things fit into the regime break, so um, our own and then the regime in this sense. So far as liberalism is understood still 
uh, you could say in the Hobbesian sense, you can make a simple form of liberal, liberalism where the citizen has this obligation towards the um, minimal state things, towards um, self-preservation, but everything else is totally um, left up to themselves, which then means de facto you get this kind of Hayek position where you're praising um, um, the use of uh, the law primarily as the main thing in law and money and um, become the rule and nothing else. No um, ruler which is coming in like the church or the nobility to say you have to strictly um, follow these rules. Um, Okay, so that's a little bit um, tapering off uh, at this point, but um, I just give that as some uh, something to work with a little bit on this question of um, what I mentioned at the beginning.